Hallelujah. What shall we say to these things? <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Can we just begin by speaking in tongues and just praying in the spirit? There's such a deposit of the spirit of God here throughout this conference. And you don't just want to be a spectator, you want to be an active participant in what God is doing in our midst. Even with the songs that we've been singing, it is so accurate, it's so apt. I need you to open your mouth and key in. I need you to open your mouth and pray and begin to create the right atmosphere to receive. Make way, make way, give room. Come on, give room. Rado second to sapata. In the name of Jesus, one of the things we need to know is that what, when God wants to do anything with you, he's going to give you a word. That's it. There's nothing more. He's going to give you a word. Jesus was going to be conceived and he came via a word. That's all. I mean, the angel didn't blow air over Mary. He didn't lay hands on Mary. He didn't say, I pour anointing on you, Mary. He came with a word. He came with a word. It's as simple as that. So Mary's ability to receive the word 
to lambano the word, to allow the word to stay in the inside to the extent that it became Christ in her, her womb. Is the grace that we need and the ability. Because God, everything God wants to do is encapsulated in his word. The Bible says when Jesus was giving the interpretation of the parable of the seed. He said the seed is what? The word of God. That's all. That's all. But what I find out, what I found out is the fact that our ability to receive that word and allow it incubate us is where the problem is. There's no problem with the seed. The seed is viable. The seed is powerful. The seed has the ability to deliver on whatever it has been asked to deliver. The harvest is secure. The harvest is sure. So the problem is between the seed and the harvest. Our ability to receive the word of God is the key thing here. The Bible says the sower sowed the word. The sower is God. He's constantly sowing the word. There is no lack of word. If there's anything at all, there is an abundance of word. Hallelujah. The angel came to Mary. And this is the simple thing that he said. And we're going to pray a bit before we sit down. And if the Lord helps me, I'm going to just share what the Lord has put in my heart. The angel came to Mary in Luke chapter 1. And this is what he said to her. It says from verse 28. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. There are three things you need to do to activate the word. The first one is to recognize the word. The second is to acknowledge the word. The third is to appropriate the word. And that was what Mary did. The Bible says that first she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this is. Can you remember? I don't even remember if it was Apostle Femi that said it or it was Emisi or DDK. Honestly, we've had so much this conference. <laughs> Honestly, they are just intertwined. When he was talking about how Moses saw the burning bush and he could have passed by. How God is sending you word. He's trying to get your att attention. But you could have just passed by. Did you know in that story, the Bible says when God saw that Moses turned, he spoke. So that means he was waiting to see if this guy is going to get this attention and he was going to get it. The Bible says when God saw that Moses, he caught his attention. The Bible says, and Moses said, let me turn aside and see this great light. And God now spoke. Mary said, what is this manner of greeting? She didn't just say, oh, angel has come. She inquired, what is this manner of greeting? Our ability to sit, Pastor Femi, Apostle Femi said it this morning, where you receive the word and you regurgitate the word and you allow the word, bear fruit is always a process. It's not something that is done overnight. There are no overnight miracles. There are no overnight blessings. Mary said, what manner of greeting this is. She recognized I want you to lift up your hands and pray and say, Father, my ability to recognize you. Hey, when the three men came to Abraham, they didn't have, you know, signposts and say, this is God. But the Bible says Abraham picked it and recognized that this is God. Your ability to recognize your word. Come on, open your mouth and say, Lord, open my eyes. Help me, help me. I don't want to pass by. I don't want it to pass me by. My ability to recognize. Mary said, what manner of greeting is this? He says, blessed are you, oh favored one. He said, what manner of greeting is this? She recognized that this is the word of God. She recognized that this is different. Come on, pray. Lord, help me recognize your word. Help me recognize it. Let me know what my Zoe word is. Help me, Lord. Rado sapali ketosa parabadabaha. 
Erada bakata la bado so bregi dike la baha. Jada bakaso to bregede. In the name of Jesus. The ultimate harvest that God is looking for is the replication of Christ in you. That's the ultimate harvest. If the word can become flesh, can become Christ, such that we can see you become the full stature of Christ, that's the harvest that God is looking for. Because when we become Christ and we become sons on the earth, the Bible says he initially was the only begotten of the Father. But when he died and sowed himself as a seed, he became what? The firstborn among many brethren. That means the singular reason, and I think Pastor Missy said it, that God gave a son that he might show you what it means to be a son so that he can have many other sons. That's the purpose. That's the reason for your existence. That's why you have come to meet with Christ. That Christ can be formed in you. Hallelujah. And you go about walking as Christ. And that was the greatest undoing of the devil. Had he known he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because he felt when I kill one, I've killed all. He didn't realize that when I kill one, I've raised many others. Hallelujah. Many more sons unto glory. Hallelujah. Mary recognized the word. And then he acknowledged, she acknowledged the word. Oh, where I'm going to before, and then we're going to pray and then hopefully we'll sit. She appropriated the word. Have you read in your Bible where the Bible says that the word did not profit them? Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. Mary received the word. The foreground type of soil that the word fell on, they all received the word. If you read that place. But the outcome was different. But they all received the word. They received it. Your ability to receive is not enough. But on what soil is it landing on is what is most important. Hallelujah. You know what Mary said at the end of the day? And that's the prayer you're going to pray. And that was how she was able to internalize that word that came as a seed. It was just a word. I mean, God was going to bring about Christ. And it came as a word. A conversation. You know, the Bible tells me that the angel came in. This is my own analogy and I've said it before here. I don't think the angel came with wings. I want to believe the angel came almost like a man. Walked in and had a conversation. God delivered the blueprints for the world in a conversation. Your ability to recognize the word. Mary was not at a crusade. Mary was not at a vigil. She wasn't at a retreat. She was in a house. And the word came and she received it. And at the end, she said, how can these things be? And the angel gave a formula. And that's why you're going to pray. Because your ability to internalize the word is not in your strength. You can't do it of your own strength. The ability to ensure that the word is engrafted. The ability to ensure that the word produces fruits. is not by your ability. It's not something you have skill for. It takes a superior power. And that's what the angel said. And you're going to pray in a bit. Let's read it. Luke chapter 1. The angel said to her. He said, how can these things be? Verse 34. Since I do not know a man. He said that the angel answered and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you do you know what it means to overshadow that means you don't exist that means it takes over he increases and you decrease overshadow means it takes over you don't have a will pastor missy was saying it i don't have a will it's all about your will it's all about what you want to do he says mary that's what's going to happen when you let the holy spirit overshadow you the Holy Spirit he said and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you <laughs> and the power of the most high therefore also that holy one which to be born will be called the son of God do you want to deliver God great results because that's what it means to birth Christ 
God great results. It takes the overshadowing of the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and begin to internalize that. And say, Lord, I receive an overshadowing of the power of the Most High over my seed, over the word. As I receive the word, as I recognize the word, I'm able to appropriate the word by the overshadowing power that comes via the Holy Ghost. You increase and I decrease in the name of Jesus. Come on, are there saints praying in here this evening? That's how the word becomes flesh. That's how the word becomes flesh. Uh, and people will behold the glory. And the word became flesh uh, and dwelt amongst men. Men could relate with it. Men could understand it. Men could internalize it. And the Bible says, and they beheld his glory. Come on, open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, the overshadowing effect, the overshadowing power of the Most High. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, incubate the word of God in me. In the name of Jesus, I surrender myself under the overshadowing power of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I can do nothing outside of you. I have no power of myself. I have no strength of myself. I can do absolutely nothing without you. Without you. Come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me. Deliver the harvest of the word of God in my life to the stature of the mature Christ in the name of Jesus. I no longer want to be a baby in Christ. I want to attain the full stature of your glory, the full stature of your power. It is at work in me. It is at work in me. Come on, saints of God. Let the Holy Ghost do his work in your life. Ezo parada bakata, eze peleketo sa pariketo, apa ye katala mandeketo, arada bakasa tabaka tele bahado, rakanto sa palikata. In the name of Jesus, I know what Mary did. <laughs> the Bible says in verse thirty-eight, then Mary said. Behold, Omoriola, the servant of the Lord, let it be unto me according. Is that your prayer? That everything about your life is going to be according to his word. Everything, every detail of your life is going to be as he has said every detail every area every sphere of your influence is under guarded by the word of God that was what Mary said she surrendered she submitted herself come on open your mouth and declare it in the name of Jesus that is it in the name of Jesus be it unto me according to your word be it unto me according to your word every area of my life let it be in accordance to your word my thoughts in accordance to your word my actions in accordance to your word how I raise my family in accordance to your word my marriage in accordance to your word my business in accordance to your word my career in accordance to your word my ministry in accordance to your word my relationships in accordance to your word in the name of Jesus let it be in accordance to your word let it be in alignment with your word not deviating in any area from your word let my life be a replica of the victory that comes via your word in the name of Jesus come on saints of God Pray that prayer into your life. Declare it over yourself. In the name of Jesus, let it be. Behold, here I am. Let it be according to your word. Let it be 
according to your word let your walk take preeminence let your word overshadow by your spirit in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus John chapter 1 verse 14 says and the word became flesh <laughs> and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory tell your neighbor they're going to behold his glory in me oh they're going to behold his glory in me because I'm going to manifest it I'm going to manifest it oh the Bible says the glory as of the only begotten of the father but now as of the firstborn amongst many brethren because I'm going to show forth his glory in the name of Jesus glory to God hallelujah if you may you may just sit down for a minute glory to God hallelujah oh thank you Jesus the harvest of the word it's so amazing I don't know if you've we probably noticed it since the conference. You know, sometimes when you hear themes like harvest, you're thinking of, you know, prosperity. You're thinking of harvest of, you know, um, so many things, houses, cars, and all of that. But it seemed like <laughs> the things we've been hearing since Thursday is like God took us to the roots. He's dealing with the main thing, the real deal. And he's saying to us, pay attention to this. There has to be a return on investment. There has to be. Oh, I love it how DDK puts it. said, you are God's vision board. God has expectations of us. We have raised a generation of people who only know the hand of God, how to receive. But they forget that God is also expecting a certain return from you. He's invested in you, the word. He says, my word will not return to me void. But the Bible told us that lack of faith can make the word void. That's what the Bible says. He says, but as many as received him. So the, the, the key thing there is ability to receive. He's not going to make you receive. You have to be able to receive. It is him that worketh it not, but to will and to do for his own good pleasure. But then he says what? Walk out your own salvation. <laughs> With fear and trembling. Hallelujah. You have to put the seed to work. You have to plant it. You have to sow it. It's the seed of the word of God. You know, I just want to stay. We've heard so much. But there was something the Lord opened my eyes to see that I had not seen before. And I'm just going to share that briefly. Am I allowed to do that? Yes. Yes. I'm the one holding the mic. <laughs> Ooh, thank you so much, Pastor Dele, for the honor and the privilege to do this during this conference. I do not take it for granted at all. You know, um, during the 30 days prayer and fasting, Pastor Dele gave an instruction through the word of God that we should um, sow to the Levi to the stranger, to the widow, and to the orphan. It was an instruction that came. And I sold my own seed to my Levi, which is my pastor. You know, he's so blessed that he didn't even realize something hit his account. Maybe because it wasn't big money. <laughs> I had to say, sir, you must see what I sent you to you. <laughs> it's my seed offering. Oh, please pray for me. You don't get too familiar. If you get too familiar, you lose the anointing. And people like us are the ones that need to remind ourselves constantly not to get too familiar. So, Pastor Dele, I truly honor and celebrate you as my pastor. He's been my pastor for over 25 years. Yes, over 25 years. And the morning you see today is a product of the word that I have been eating. I've been well fed. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke. Uh, Chapter 8, the parable of the sower. Oh, Pastor Emisi, thank you so much for blessing us, you know, with the rare dimension of the word of God that you've brought in this conference. I mean, everyone, I don't know, Envoy, have you been blessed? 
I mean, we have a whole lot to go back to. Ooh. You know, I said something. I said the word, the seed, is not the problem. Because it is the sower that is sowing the seed. And we've established that that sower is God. And the parable says the seed is the word of God. But we find from that scripture that the sower doesn't exactly have control over the soil he falls on. But he has control over his own seed. Yes. Hallelujah. And so the Bible tells us that some fell by the wayside. I'm not going through all of that. We've done all of that. But I'm particular about the good ground. The Bible says in verse, where is it? Yes, verse 8. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. And then Jesus gave an explanation of that in verse uh, 15. He says, but the ones that fell on the good ground are those who have, having heard the word, with a noble and good heart. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, noble and good heart. The Bible says they keep it. I like that. They keep it. And they bear fruit with what? Patience. And if you want to summarize everything we've been hearing so far, it's about allowing the word of God to bear fruit with patience. There are no overnight miracles. None at all. I've heard people say, Joseph slept as a prisoner and woke up as a prime minister. No, sir. It was a journey that took almost 13 years that we saw happen overnight. No, it wasn't an overnight miracle. God had been cooking him. God had been working on him. And so we see that overnight and then that is what we celebrate. But we don't ask the story before the story. We don't get to know how did you get here? What is the journey? But you know the beautiful thing about Joseph? Joseph is one of my favorite characters in the Bible, by the way. You know, every stage of his process was needful in the outcome. No part of his story, as horrible as it was, was not needful in the final outcome. I'm going somewhere. When he was in his father's house, the Bible says he would come back and give reports of his brothers. God was building a skill in him. Ability to account. Ability to report. Whether good or bad, he was bringing back reports. When he was in Potiphar's house, the Bible says he was in charge of everything, the goods. So he knew how to manage resources. God was using him to build his ability to manage resources. The Bible says there was nothing that came in or out of Pharaoh's house that Joseph didn't know about. Pharaoh himself didn't even know. Uh, sorry, Potiphar didn't even know what came into his house and what left his house. But Joseph knew everything. He gave account. He was such a worthy slave. Excellent. And when he found himself in the prison, God taught him how to manage people. Human resource. Human resource. He was in charge of the prisoners. So when he found himself in front of Pharaoh, he had mastered accounting skills, he had mastered human resource, and he had mastered how to manage other resources. Bringing everything together, you now tell me that he couldn't master Egypt. You want to one day become prime minister, and yet you've not gone through the pit, Potiphar's house, and the prison. No, you're not ready for the palace. 
And that is the process in which the seed grows through before it begins to bear fruit. The process is what God is more interested in. The outcome is secure. The outcome is guaranteed. You hear DDK saying, I'm going to arrive in heaven as a general. You didn't lambano your own. <laughs> Not as one who just escaped fire. I tell people, God is not going to, see, there are grades in heaven, no? The Bible says that our works will be tested by fire. The Bible says a noble ground, <laughs> a good heart. It says keep it, bear fruit with patience. Let's look at the Matthew. That's actually, Matthew is where I want to look at. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, the Mat Matthew uh, account of the parable of the sower. And I want to show us something. When the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see this, I'm like, wow, I never saw that. Matthew 13, where is it? Okay. The last one, verse 23. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. The difference between the good soil and the rocky and the soil with thorns and the soil by the wayside is that what they lacked, the good soil had. So the good soil was able to manage the thorns and appropriate it. The good soil received the word and understood it. And the good soil did not allow the cares of the world. So, you know when the Bible says that the house that is built upon the rock and the house that is built upon the sand, did you guys realize that the same thing that hits the house on the rock hits the house on the sand? God didn't say, oh, because you are built on the sand, then we are go I, I will minimize the kind of wind that will blow against you. The Bible says the wind came, the storm came on both houses, but what made one stand was the foundation. So the same thing that hits the first three soil, trust me, hits the good ground. But because the ground was good, it did not have any effect. Are you hearing me? So it's not like the good ground did not experience those things. In the sense that, the, yes, the word came, it could have also been stolen. But he understood it, so it wasn't stolen. He appropriated the word. Hallelujah. But for the purpose of where I'm going this evening, just follow me. <laughs> the Bible says, Psalm 140, 60, and 30. Have you ever asked yourself, honestly, student of the Bible, why 100, what actually brought about, if it's a good ground, right? We said it's a noble, good heart. He kept it and he, he was able to bear fruit. But why did some, the same good ground, 100, 60, 30? Anybody ever wondered why? We've established seed that it has nothing to do with the seed. So the seed is good. And they said it had, that the ground is good. The soil is good. So why did it produce 160 and 30? Have you ever wondered? Talk to me now. So why? Why? John 15. Let me show us something. <laughs> Ooh. The word of God is sweet. John chapter 15. John 15, not Matthew. John 15. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. So that means that. 30 fold is that you are bearing fruit. Someone didn't get that. Did you see that? And some people are comfortable. At 30 fold, at least I'm bearing fruit. The Bible says, every, there's a level of those who are not even bearing at all. The Bible says, it, don't come and occupy space. Hey, God forbid, that won't be your portion. 
These are the parts we don't teach or people don't necessarily meditate on about God. We honestly think God is just Santa Claus. Was it Pastor Missy that was singing that song? <laughs> Your first message. <laughs> How we just think that the only side of God we know is the pampering side of God. Yes, yeah, so daddy they pamper, oh, but daddy they chastise too. Somebody didn't say yes because they're like, I don't want to know that side of God. No. He pampers, but he, he chastises as well. And that's what he's saying. He says, you're bearing fruit, but if you're going to bear more fruit, I'm going to prune you. There's nobody, there's nobody that God has used that they don't have a story. Check the Bible. Their lives didn't look like it. I, I mean, imagine. David was in his house, jet jelly. Jet jelly. And they came to anoint him. He didn't ask for it. He didn't beg for it. He didn't say, Lord, and some of us are praying it. And when God now wants to take you through it, you are saying, God, I beg. The young man was just in his house. And you know, God is so amazing. You know, when, when Saul misbehaved, you know that story when he said, utterly destroy, and he kept one part, he said, you know, I was trying to, and God sent Samuel to Saul. You know what God said? He said, I have found myself a man after my own heart. I have found him. Even the man didn't realize he had been found. David didn't realize what was on the mind of God, that he had been found. God said, I found a man, Samuel. By the time he found him, he was just busy in the fields, singing his psalms and nobody understood him. Like a person was saying, everything he was doing sounded foolish. And they were wondering. But God said, I found him. He's got the right heart. Hey, the things that God uses to judge, they are not our yardstick. Pastor Dele has said it before, and I've said it here before. When Jesus stood at um, River Jordan, the angel, that God spoke from heaven, rather. I know what he said. He said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Please tell me, what had Jesus done? He hadn't even started his ministry. But the father said, I'm pleased. Why do we think the father said he was pleased? obedience because he obeyed the father said I'm pleased Jesus whether you do any miracle whether you heal anybody whether you raise any dead I'm well pleased with you David was just by himself God said God, and the Bible says he anointed him in the presence of his brothers and you say they will not envy him you know God will set you up sometimes and then he now sent him to go and serve a king that he was, that was sitting on a throne he had been anointed for. Who does that? Do you know what that means? Every day you are serving a king that you know they've poured oil on your head for. And you are not scheming how to overthrow him. You are not praying for him to fall down and die. Did you know that David was so committed, so loyal, that even when Saul was throwing javelins at him, he didn't leave? Did you realize that? He served Saul with all his heart, even to the point he kept saying, my father. Pity has taught us this several times. He never for once used any wrong word against a man that sought to kill him. Every day of his life, a man that has been anointed to become king became a fugitive. Come on, guys. The price you have to pay, you're ready to pay it. We want the anointing, but we don't want to go through the process. You know what the anointing does? It prepares you for the journey. You didn't get that. You know, anointing, they usually is similar to oil. 
So what does oil do? What does it do? It brings ease. It makes it easy. So when you are anointed, doesn't mean you are appointed. But the anointing makes the process. Gives you grace to go through the process to where you're going. It says that you may bear more fruits. He's going to prune you. What does pruning mean? He's going to cut off what is not necessary. Pruning is not always easy. It's not always a very easy experience. He's going to cut off. See, that is when he's going to begin to give you certain instructions. He will tell you, pray at this time. And you know, sometimes when God gives us instructions, we expect that he's given us instructions. You know, so he will give you instruction, but not necessarily because <laughs> there's something. He's just testing your obedience. I don't know if that's happened to you before. And you are wondering, and maybe because the way God said, oh, sow this seed. And you know, our Christian mind, that if I've sown this seed, then maybe by next week, somebody will just dash me one million pounds. No, 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 let's be honest now. That's, that's the thinking. But God just says so this is because he's testing your obedience level. And he will use those things to establish you. He will use those things to do what? Stabilize you. To help you understand how he thinks, how he works. Said to Abraham, at the point of meeting, I've made you already. I'm not about to make you. I've made you father of nations. It's a settled matter. But he now said, walk down before me and be blameless. Journey with me. It takes the father of nations to father Isaac. You have to become the father of nations in the process of 25 years. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Is the son that the father loves that he what? Chastises. He walks on. But it's as a result of your yieldedness. How yielded are you to the pruning of the father? The next verse. So you can see 30 fold. You've seen 60 fold. It says you are clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Next verse. Abide in me and I in you. Ah. Now that's the tough one. So the first level is you bear fruit. For you to bear more fruit, you need to be pruned. Do you get that at least to that point? He now says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless he abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Next verse. <laughs> I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Bears what? Come on church. Did he say more fruit? Much fruit. As a hundredfold. Can you see the progression? You can be comfortable with bearing fruit. But come on, I want to bear much fruit. Bear fruit is okay. I'm fine. It was that person that was saying yesterday. So that thing hits me and say, Chai, say some mercy God gives you. It's just to keep you where you are. It's not, you, 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 God forbid. Oof. When, ah, God is really amazing. When Naomi left with her family to Moab, they had no idea that that journey was connected to being in the lineage of Christ. She had no idea. She left. She jackpad. Because <laughs> there was hardship in Bethlehem. And she left. She got there, she had two sons, they got married, and then her husband died. And then the first son died. It's amazing that they were married for 10 years and neither of them had children. (laughs) Did you ever think about it? Then the first child died. Then the second son died. She said, call me Mara. Call me bitterness. The only thing she took out of Moab was her seed. 
But she didn't realize that that woman was going to connect her to being in the lineage of Christ. Ruth didn't look like anything. She didn't have anything to offer. She had lost everything. Even um, Naomi said, I don't have anything. Even if I get married today and I have a child today, you, would you wait for the child? But she didn't realize that that same Ruth carried what she needed. See, sometimes some decisions, some steps you take, they are connected to things that are far beyond you. Your harvest cannot end with you. The harvest we are talking about cannot, it's not about what you, it's not about anything material. It has to reproduce after its own. Such that your children's children, generation after generation. Pastor Mitchell was talking about it today, about Paul. Thousands of years later, we are still gleaning from Paul. What will people glean from you? When they go back to your Facebook status of 2020-2008. Is it relevant for any generation right now? Think about it. Those are your letters or you don't realize. That's what people are going to be reading in another 10 years, 20 years. Or you think Facebook doesn't forget or internet does not forget. <laughs> what are they going to be reading? The Bible says, if you abide in me, and I in you, is a two-way thing. If I abide in you, and you in me, then you will bear much fruit. That's a hundredfold. That's a hundredfold. That's a hundredfold. Abide in me. Don't do vacations in me. Don't come to me when you are in need. Abide. Settle down. Stay in me. Let the word gain roots in you. And the delivery of the word, the fruit you bear, is a function of the season. You know about the palm tree? Do you know that when the palm tree finally begins to bear fruit... He bears fruit, some of them for life. Some of them a hundred years. But before he bears fruit, some of them take almost 60 years. And they say it takes a number of years still in the ground. It doesn't shoot up. So if you plant palm tree, don't sit and wait. While Abraham was on this journey with God, he became several things. As the day I started before, he became an intercessor. He became a warrior. He was training 317 men in his house. I think it's just shallow Christianity. That everything we discuss with God is about what he will. I mean, was it Apostle Remy that said it, that everything about your life in 2024 is God gave you a husband? God forbid. There are deeper things. There are fruits. That God is demanding from you. Have you read that story? And I'm sure you almost think that that was very insensitive of Jesus. When he got to that tree and he, he was hungry and he wanted something. And the Bible says it was not yet the season. But yet he cost it. Why? Because when he places a demand on you, you produce. Because the one speaking to the tree is the one that created the tree. Because we are able to produce in and out of season. That's the kind of word that we carry on our inside. It's not the word that gets us excited when things are going well. But when you go through a tough time, God, where are you? God, where is your face? God, I, now this you go to look me. Is this how you're going to be looking at me? Is this how I'm going to be? Shallow Christianity. God is demanding on us, of us, to bear much fruit. Tell your neighbor, bear much fruit. Don't stay at bearing fruits. Don't even settle for bearing more fruits. Get to much. So when you are being pruned, then you get to that point where you understand what it means to abide in him. And he abides.
see, it's not about you abiding. He abides in you. He finds home in you. God is comfortable to reside in you. Think about that. Is your life, have you created enough room where God can abide in you comfortably? He says, abide in me, reside in me, and I in you. He says, for without me, you can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Can you lift up your hands and just pray? I say, Holy Spirit, help me. I acknowledge that without you, I can do nothing. Without you, I can do absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I want to bear much fruit. I'm created to bear much fruit. <laughs> Are you praying? Are you praying? In the name of Jesus, come on. Zatosa pali katala manoso bregede. He says, if you abide in my word, aso pali katala manoso bregede kata. Ileto saparada bakatala badoso bregede. John chapter eight. <laughs> See something here. John chapter eight, verse thirty-one. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. So they had already believed. So this is not for people who are just coming to believe. They already believed him. This is what he said to them. He says, I mean, he's saying to those who already believed him. And then you would expect that. If they believed you, then that, that settles it. He said, no. He says, if. That is the condition. You might, you might not. If. You abide in my word. He says, then you are my disciples indeed. So there are many who believe, yet they are not disciples. Someone didn't catch that. If you abide, there are so many touch and go Christians. We see them in church when there's a problem. They wear the pastor out when there's a problem. Some pastors have become prayer contractors. He says they believed already. So the problem is not that they didn't believe. But he now says, you need to take it a step further. You need to abide. You need to make a home. You need to sit on it. You need to lambano it. You need to let it gain roots. It takes time. It takes process. It's not Sunday, Sunday, dusting your Bible and coming to church. It's sitting around the Word. It's not listening to audio Bible alone. When you listen to it, sit down at home again and sit with your study notes. Go back. Sometimes God will take you back to what you wrote in 2015 because it's relevant for now. He says, you are my disciples. I like that he put indeed. Indeed. Truly. I want to be a disciple indeed. He says, the only way is if you abide in my word. I pray that the Lord through this conference will raise a generation of believers who truly seek after his word. That his word defines their life. That you talk in scriptures. Can you get to that point? Do you realize that the word of God is relevant for all situations? Do you realize that the Holy Spirit is intelligent in all situations? Oh, there's no other. Bible says he is able to teach us some things. Talk to me. Teach us some things. All things. The Bible says he searches all things. He broods over everything. He's able to deliver to you the mind of God in every sphere of influence. He has the answer for education. He has the answer for entertainment. He has the answer for politics. He has the answer for governance. It is in the Holy Ghost, the person of the Spirit of God. That we are able to stay with the word that we are not too weak and we are not too lazy 
There is an inheritance for the believers. We've been teaching on inheritance in this house for the last one month. And one of the things we've come to understand and realize is the fact that the heir, for as long as is a child, does not differ from a slave. The son guards the inheritance. The son manages the inheritance. The fact that the slave. heir, for as long as is a child, and that's what God is calling for, does this not differ is sonship. from a slave. The God son has many children, but very few God's sons. the inheritance. The son manages your the inheritance. Choice whether you the want fact to that the heir is son. Son will require pruning. Sonship will require that you bear much fruit. Hallelujah. I want to be able to bear fruit. I want to abide in your word. That I will be a disciple indeed. And then the next verse says, and you shall know the truth. And that truth will make you free. Because you are now a disciple indeed. You will come to the knowledge of the truth. And that truth, it didn't say will set you free. Will make you free. Hallelujah. Can you just begin to pray? Can you just begin to pray? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. Just keep praying. Ooh, thank you Lord. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. <laughs> For indeed the gospel was preached to us. As well as to them. But the word which they heard. Did not profit them. We want the profiting of the word. Come on, are you praying? I want the profiting of the word. Why did it not profit them? The Bible says it was not mixed with faith in those who heard it. I want you to begin to pray for yourself. The profiting of the word. The profiting of the word. It is mixed with faith in my heart. In the name of Jesus, I am bearing fruit. I am bearing more fruit because I submit myself to your pruning. I submit myself to your leadership. I submit myself to your rulership. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come in my life. Your will is done in my life. In the name of Jesus. Come on, are you praying? Profiting. The word brings profiting to me. It produces results in my life. The word becomes flesh in me. In the name of Jesus. And many behold your glory through me. In the name of Jesus. I'm your glory on display. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I manifest Christ. I manifest Christ in every sphere of my influence. Where the word of God. The word works in my life. The word works in my life. Because I mix it with faith. Faith is stayed in the inside of me. In the name of Jesus. The word of God is profiting to me. It's profiting to me. Come on. Lambano that. The word of God produces results. Results in my children. Results in my marriage. Results in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus, I submit and surrender myself to the authority of the word of God. To the authenticity of the word of God. I submit and surrender myself to the viability of the word of God. In the name of Jesus, come on. The word bears fruit, more fruit, much fruit, a hundredfold, a hundredfold return, a hundredfold return. I have the capacity to receive, I have the capacity to retain, I have the capacity to release as occasion demands. 
in the name of Jesus come on pray come on pray the word of God leads me the word of God orders my step is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my path in the name of Jesus I'm a product of the word of God I'm a product of the word of God in the name of Jesus the word of God does not fail not in my life it produces results I receive your word I receive your word in the name of Jesus one more prayer point Lord enlarge my capacity to receive your word to retain it to let it do its work in me and to release it as occasion demands come on pray enlarge my capacity do your work in me do your work in me let your word find the right environment in the name of Jesus. That's not a prayer you pray once. It's a prayer you pray all the time. One of my favorite stories is the story of Jesus and his disciples on the way to Emmaus. These were people that had been with Jesus for three and a half years. Yet they were confused as regard what the father was doing at that time. Totally confused. They were discussing something as important to their destiny. They were discussing it like gossip. Have you not heard? Oh, Igboni. Where have you been in this town? Didn't you hear that they said that uh, one Jesus, Jesus, uh, you know, he came, he told us that this, 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 this. And I'm sure Jesus was, he was marveled. And the Bible says, beginning from Moses and the prophets, he began to expound unto them the things concerning himself. No other person can reveal the word to you than the word himself. The Bible says he opened the scripture to them. He began to expound unto them. And that thing, was it you that said it or did they can't remember? The Bible says their hearts burned, but they didn't do anything. Because they said, did not our heart burn? It's not enough for your heart to burn. Did you realize they were walking away from where God said they should be? They would have missed. Because when you read the next thing, the Bible says Jesus appeared. Because they had gone back. They were walking away. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem. They were walking away. These were disciples who. The Bible says when they got to one place, Jesus made as if he was going for that. I love Jesus. He took them compelling him. May you be able to compare. He said, no, stay with us. It's so funny. Sometimes we feel God will come direct. He won't. There has to be something. There has to be something on your own side. You have to place a demand. You have to pull yourself. Bible says, and he broke bread and their eyes opened. He said, did not our hearts burn as he spoke with us? Some people stay at burning and they don't do anything. And the Bible says, immediately that night they turned. They made a U-turn. That night, they didn't wait till the next morning. Immediately they turned. I want you to open your mouth once again and pray ability to receive recognize your word articulate your word appropriate your word as occasion demands capacity in the spirit enlarge my capacity in the name of Jesus this conference must not go without your capacity being enlarged ability to, 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 to persevere in the place of prayer to persevere in the place of study because your life depends on it. He opened unto them the scripture. He began to reveal to them the things concerning himself. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me in the scriptures. Let's walk hand in hand. Let's walk together.